We'll begin working with the motion framework by taking a look at two methods of polling and getting data. One method will be classical polling, in which we'll have a timer and we'll just call the motion framework to get data. And the other method will run the motion data and capture its events for when it has information for us. We're going to be getting accelerometer and gyroscope data in this example. Those are the two pieces that we can get from the C Motion Manager. In our storyboard, we have a start polling and a stop polling button. And then we also have a start events and stop events button. In both cases, we'll be looking for motion data on a relatively continuous basis at an interval that we set up when we start the polling or start looking for events. We'll show the results of the data in these two labels for acceleration and gyros. As a note, in a general practice, polling has a bad reputation when there's actually an eventing system available. However, in this case, it actually is better in terms of CPU performance and battery life. So that's why we'll take a look at it. Which you choose will depend, of course, upon your application's requirements. In our view controller, we need to import the core motion header. And then we have properties for our two labels. And of course, we handle the actions for the various buttons. And then we have a property for the CM Motion Manager. And we're going to use that for both the polling and eventing technique. When the view does load, we'll create the Motion Manager. And as a check, we'll check with the Motion Manager to determine if the device motion is available. If it isn't, we shouldn't try to use it. In this case, in our app, we're not actually following that advice, however. But you might put in something like disabling buttons in this area. First, take a look at the polling. And when start polling is touched, we'll call start device motion updates on our motion manager and then set the timer off at an interval. In this case, we're using about 100 milliseconds. When the timer ticks, we call the motion manager and ask for its device motion property. We get a CM device motion. We'll see in future lessons that we can get acceleration and gyroscope data individually. But in this case, the device motion property contains both of them. Again, if your app is only using acceleration, you probably shouldn't use this technique. You probably should use just the acceleration aspect of the motion manager. And that's to preserve CPU cycles and battery life. So now that we have our CM device motion object, we'll just go into it and its gravity property, and we'll get the Z axis. I chose Z because that will show us if you lay the phone or iPad directly down on a table, it should show you 1G which indicates one unit of Earth's gravity. And we'll set our label accelerations text to that value. We'll do essentially the same for the gyro text, except in this case, we'll be looking at the rotation rate in the x-axis. When the stop polling button is touched, we'll call our motion manager and tell it to stop device motion updates. And then we'll also stop our timer. So that's all there is to polling. So that's fairly simple as well. If we want to handle events, on our Start Events button touch, we'll set our Motion Manager's Device Motion Update Interval. In this case, we're using it as one second, just to do something different than what we did with the timer. Then on the Motion Manager, we call Start Device Motion Updates to Q. We pass in the current Q, and then we give it a handler. In this case, my handler is just this local code, but you can also, of course, call a method within your class. Within this handler, I'm doing exactly the same thing I was with the motion data, setting the acceleration and gyro text. Also on my stop events button touch, I'm doing the same thing as well, calling the motion manager and stopping device motion updates. Now, of course, on a simulator, the accelerometers and gyros aren't available. And even if they were, they wouldn't do a heck of a lot. So I can't actually demonstrate this to you. And that will be a theme throughout the course. But do take a look at this code on a device, and you'll see as you move the device around that the updates will occur.